Hello again and welcome to RC Model Reviews and today something a little different, it's not FPV, it's not EDF jets, it's multi-rotors, it's this horrible quad rotor I got from Good Luck Buy in China, I bought this a long time ago and it had bits missing and I've been meaning to get around to putting it together and well finally I have but it really wasn't worth the effort, it's really heavy, this weighs about one and a quarter kilograms, believe it or not, with a battery in it, just a 2200 three cell, 25 seat pack, it's one and a quarter kilograms, that's enormously heavy. Um, also, I threw some three bladed props on, look at this, why did I do that? Because these are all I had laying around, well actually I tell a lie, I've got some like this, but ugh, they're too flip, flimsy and flexible and ugh. So I thought I'd put the three bladers on, got some really cheap budget motors on it, and I've just got the standard Hobby King 30 amp blue ESCs, on there so uh, it's really nothing flash and that's a good thing because I'm going to use it to test out the new Hobby King KK2 board, the flight controller board, the one with the little built-in LCD. If that can stop this thing from flipping on its back then um, you know it's obviously a really good controller. So what I'll do is uh, I've wired it all up already, let's have a look inside this little uh, dome in here and this is just one of those little click clack um, plastic uh, like Tupperware but they've got little clippy things on the side and it that's you buy these they have a little lid on the top and you put the lid on the top of your quadcopter and you just put this clips on the top so you, basically it protects all your expensive stuff and uh, it doesn't look too bad either so let's have a look inside see what the little KK2 board looks like and how I've installed it so here it is, this is looking a bit closer now, and there's the KK board mount, KK2 board mounted on top here. Um, you can see that I've got a 8 channel FreeSky receiver underneath, maybe you can see that, I don't know. And this is wires going to this board, as you would expect. Now, there are 5 wires going here which carry the signals for 5 channels from your receiver. The channel 1 through 5. And 4 of those, of course, you've got your roll, your pitch, your yaw and your throttle. And then there's an extra one which just basically is switchable which can be used to control the auto uh, leveling feature because this has auto leveling isn't that wonderful doesn't work very well actually and then over this side we've got the connectors for all the motors that you're going to be hooking up you see it's got up to eight connectors here i'm only using four because this is a quad rotor but you've got your uh, your y6 and your tricopters and quadcopters and octocopters can all be controlled by this board so it's quite versatile quite handy now down here we've got a row of four push buttons these are little tack switches and the big thing this lcd look at that an lcd so you don't have to keep going off to your computer to change any of the settings which was always a problem with the older boards you had to plug in the laptop and play around with a few you know bits of software to get any even a small change made to the settings on your controller board but this you can throw your computer away, all you've got to do is just use the on-screen menu, simple as that. And uh, so what I'll do now is I'll power it up and we'll have a look at what the LCD shows you. And before anybody grumbles that I haven't taken the props off, yes you should always take the props off when you're messing around with a quadcopter, any multi-rotor, because if something goes wrong then these can spin around, it can take off, can take your, you know, can take your hand, take a finger off, don't ask how I know, just kidding. Um, but yep, it's a real risk if you have the props on while you're messing around, so take them off. Do as I say, not as I do. There may be some sprays of blood in this video coming up very shortly, but hopefully not. Now let's take a look at this LCD. I'll have to zoom in a bit more closely, I think, for you to get a good view of this. So here we go, I've just turned it on, and as you can see, it says safe. So that means basically if I raise the throttle on my transmitter, the motors won't start up. It's basically they've been disabled so that I can play safely with my multi-rotor. Now if I wanted to actually start flying, all I have to do is arm it. I do by pulling a stick over, pulling my rudder stick over, and there we go, it's armed. Now if I raise the throttle stick, it will take off. Notice this little LED up here that glows, so you can see that through the plastic bubble on your multi-rotor. So you know if it's armed. I can disarm it by giving full opposite yaw, and it goes back to safe mode. Isn't that wonderful? It's going to save a few fingers, isn't it? Right, now let's look at this little uh, menu system here. It's quite nicely done, I've got to say. There's a lot of thought gone into this. It's a really nice piece of firmware. But one thing to notice, first of all, is it says voltage 0.0, .0 volts down here. Why is that? That's because I haven't hooked up a wire from my battery pack to the board. Now, as I said, everything else is just plug in. You see the connectors down the side of the board. But if you want to have this monitor your main pack voltage so it can sound an alarm, because it comes with a little buzzer that plugs into the board, it'll go beep beep. If your voltage gets too low and your multi rotor is about to fall out of the sky, if you want that function, you've got to do a little tiny bit of soldering. One wire has to be soldered on to the board. It's not a big deal. Anyone who's done any reasonably 
good soldering before would manage that. Be nice if they actually had a facility to do it without having to solder though. Never mind, it's only a small downside to what is otherwise quite a good product so far. Let's have a look at these menus. Um, here we go, I'll push a button and ooh, look, you get a menu. Isn't that cool? So this is the stuff you used to have to do with your laptop, but now you don't have to. And you notice it's just starting to beep. Hear that beeping noise? That's telling me I'm in the menu mode, so I can't arm it. I'm actually in play around mode. Now we've got these other buttons here, they're labeled. It's labeled on the LCD what the buttons do. So if I want to go down through the menus, I just push this button and we can scroll through the menus. Isn't that cool? And there's quite a few of them. You can change so many different settings on this thing. It's actually really, really good. It's a very flexible flight controller. And at least at this stage, there's nothing to really grizzle about except Unfortunately, I looked at the construction. It's okay. It's not the best reflow soldering I've seen. And there's some issues like if I push on this LCD, ooh, it stops working. Look, oh, intermittently stops working. There must be a loose connection there somewhere. It just goes off and on. Ah, that's quality control for you. And it's not stuck down. It looks like it's supposed to be stuck down, but it's not. So, ah, uh, what can you say? They're cheap as beans. If you're really, really worried, you might get a dud one. Just buy two. And then you've got half the chance of getting a dud one. It's really quite a good way for Hobby King to sell more product, I suppose. Never mind. So that's the controller, what it looks like, and uh, basic fundamental operations. You can change things like the P and I values. Now, I'll go into those in a bit more depth, but if you go online, go to the Hobby King site, or just search YouTube, you'll find a whole heap of stuff showing how to set these boards up and what those P and I settings do. If there's any real interest, I might do a bit of a background on PID systems and what P stands for, what I stands for, and how those two different values interact to give you a stable multi-rotor. But only if you want it. If you want it, leave a message on the bottom of the video asking, and I'll see what I can do, see if I can make PID systems easy for beginners. So I think we've done enough talking and looking. Let's see if the damn thing flies. Okay, here we go. We're all set to go, I think, and a bit of a wind's picked up now, so not quite sure. Actually, I see a bit of turbulence in the distance there. Let's see if this thing can fly. I've painted a couple of the props uh, quite a bright colour. That may actually cause more vibration. But I did that because there's no visual cues on this thing, so... There we go. As you can see, woo! I think the settings need a bit of adjustment because the... It is popping up and down with control inputs. But overall, for a quick rough test hover, that's not too bad. It's uh, need to do some more tuning, but uh, I can't really grizzle at that, given that this is a really bad frame and uh, everything is working against this controller. It's got the three bladed props. It's a really heavy airframe and uh, it's probably vibrating like hell too because of the paint job on those props. There we go, that's, and this isn't in the self-level mode, this is just in the automatic mode, the standard mode. So yeah, I'm quite happy with that. Now I'll get set to and adjust some of the settings to give me a bit more, a uh, bit more control. I think we've got a bit too much P on this, not enough, oops, there we go. <laughs> How is that? It's a crap thing. I'm going to play around with the settings and we'll see what we can come up with after that. Okay, I've just wound down the P settings. Let's see if it makes any difference. See if it'll fly better now. So we arm it and away we go. That's a bit better, isn't it? Considering there's a bit of breeze around at the moment, I'm happy with that. Seems to be fairly stable. The yaw is still miles out because it tends to climb and descend way too much when I put your correction in, so yeah. More playing around to do, but the beauty is you can play around all to your heart's content without having to get out your laptop. And who can grizzle about that? So this is definitely a really cool little bit of board. If you're getting into multi-rotors, then if you don't want to spend a lot of money, then this is a good place to start. Brilliant. Okay, there you are. I'm no multi-rotor guru. Um, I'm fairly crap in my multi-rotor flying abilities, although I do fly the Ladybird pretty hard. But um, I've been doing a bit more playing around since I did that flight video, and the 
uh, the whole thing's settling in quite nicely, but I really do need a better airframe, better motors, better ESC. So what I might do is a, an Uber quad project later on, and uh, I'll keep an eye on this board and let you know what I think of it as the days go by. But I'm gonna have to say, summing up, um, that LCD is brilliant. What an excellent thing I can, you know, you're out there playing around trying to get everything dialed in. You just pop the lid, push a few buttons, try a new setting, mm, not, ha not happy with it. Push some buttons again, but try some more settings. Just great. And it seems nice and stable. The self-leveling I noticed is, meh, it's very slow. So you get into a bit of a forward flight. If you click the self-leveling button, it takes a long time to actually settle. And you have to be very precise in your calibration to make sure that it actually levels level and doesn't just drift off in a particular direction because the gyros think that's straight and level. So yeah, but for the money, I mean, for the money, I don't know what they are, 30 bucks or something on the Hobby King site. I mean, that, if you compare it to the price of something like a NASA, now this is not a NASA, this isn't a NASA, it doesn't have altitude hold, it doesn't have um, GPS capabilities and none of that stuff, it's just a basic controller, but if you're getting into multi-rotors and you don't want to spend a lot of money, I mean, you can do a really cheap budget setup for super low bucks with a controller like this, so that's what I recommend you do, and uh, you can spend a fortune if you want to go all the way, and this will support up to octocopters, so, you know, I'd say out of 10, product build quality it's only a seven some of the reflow was not very good and i've heard reports of some of the uh the little accelerometers and gyro devices not being properly soldered on so uh, you know it's okay i mean for that money you can buy two and you're still streets ahead but i mean i say this one worked out of the box so i've got no complaints about it whatsoever for performance it has to be certainly a seven because it's not as good as a NASA or anything else like that, but it's so close. And once you factor in the money side of things, value for money, it's gotta be a nine. It's gotta be a nine. You can't beat it. I mean, I wouldn't bother buying something else, the old KK board or, or other controllers. But of course, what I do have to do now is test the open pilot board. Maybe that's a nine and a half. I don't know. I'll get on with that. Thank you for watching, comments on the bottom. If you've had experiences with this little board, why not relate them on the bottom of this video, put a comment on there too, and tell other people how you've found it. If you found problems, tell other people. Because through this sort of like the community, online community, you guys might've picked up on stuff that I have missed, and uh, we might have questions that I or someone else can answer. Thanks for watching, see you again very soon on RC Model Reviews.